Hey, what's up guys, Mario. Back again with another great video. So today what I'm gonna go over is Teotihuacan. I had the opportunity, I had the privilege to visit Mexico City. Teotihuacan is actually an ancient archeological site, the most visited in Mexico City. If you are in Mexico City, this is a must. I had the best time of my life there. I learned so much and had the opportunity to climb uh, the Pyramid of the Sun or the Temple of the Sun, uh, whatever you want to call it. And it was amazing. It was humongous. I was exhausted by the end of it, but it was well worth it. And that is a must to do in Mexico City. If you guys visit Teotihuacan, you guys will have the opportunity to climb the Sun Temple, AKA the Pyramid of the Sun. This temple is over 200 feet tall and over 246 steps to climb. Uh, let me tell you guys, I was exhausted. I had to take multiple breaks on the way up because it's actually pretty steep, you know? So when you're actually climbing, you're actually kind of looking up and you're like, wow, like you, you're actually kind of a little bit scared to be honest. So if you're afraid of heights, uh, this is definitely a challenge, but absolutely worth it. They do have specific ropes so you can kind of hold on as you climb up. That helps with safety and things like that. So that's kind of nice. It is a great exercise. And in the video that I'm gonna show you guys, I will show you a video from the top of the Sun Temple and you guys can see the whole view of Alta Tiwakan. Made it all the way to the top of the Sun Temple in Tiwakan, Mexico City. Biggest temple in Latin America. When you're at the top of the temple, it's actually a perfect time to take a lot of selfies. Definitely IG, Instagram, worth it. Hashtag worth it. Check this out guys. Temple. Oh, there it is. There's butterflies on top of the, all the way on top of the, the temple of the sun. Look how far down it is. It's crazy. In terms of tips and advice, I highly recommend you guys on the day of the Teotihuacan, if you guys are going to do the tour on your own, I recommend you to go there very, very early uh, or get a tour guide. Alejandro was my tour guide. I will leave a link below the description with his information and the reviews of his tour guide, I highly recommend it. There were so much things that I learned from him and I'm gonna go over some of the stuff really quickly and you will see in this video, some of the stuff that he talks about regarding the Newali. Newali were actually medicine men in ancient Mesoamerica in Teotihuacan who could actually turn themselves into animals, either a dog, coyote, or a jaguar. And there's actually hieroglyphs in the walls of the temples they kind of talk about that. So definitely wake up very early, get some very light clothes, get some comfortable shoes. The sun there in Mexico, it's very strong. So get some sun lotion. You do not want to get sunburned there. In the morning, I absolutely recommend you to eat a very heavy breakfast. Think about it like a hiking trip. You guys will be climbing temples. You guys are going to be walking all over the place. There's just so much to see, so much to do. the Temple of the Moon, and we're in the Temple of the Sun, which is the biggest one. The other thing that I recommend is get one of these. I got myself one of these hats. Awesome, the best thing that I bought there. It looks great, I call it my lucky hat, my Indiana Jones hat. It looks great, I look really good. Uh, it's highly worth the investment. Hey, and when you could come back to the stage, you could use it in the summer, so. Highly worth it, guys. Get one of these. Well, guys, I'm gonna go over my personal experience, my thoughts about Teotihuacan, and what I learned and what I found very fascinating about. Now, when I went to Teotihuacan, I wasn't sure what to expect. I've been to other uh, archaeological sites, but Teotihuacan was a little bit different. And I have to thank my tour guide, Alejandro, for me doing such a great job in explaining the history, the archaeology of the site, and, and the meaning of the things they built there. Watch this. This is something we know as locals. Not many people know about this. If they know about this, they should be here watching. But nobody knows. Only a few we are locals. <laughs> we're, we're just about to see, my friends. This is what I said this morning about the temples. Why are people build the temples so high? Because they want to represent hills and mountains. Watch, okay? Open your eyes and see the relationship about the Temple of the Sun. It's exactly the same shape of the mountain. No mames, güey, a poca madre, güey, a poco no. Pude su pinche ma como lo hicieron, cabrón. No mames, a huevo, mira. Puro pulmón. So one of the things that I learned that I was actually absolutely fascinated about was that the city was actually built in a 3% slope. The reason why is because when it rained uh, and the water came through the mountains, 
uh, it actually flowed through the aqueducts that they actually built. This was fresh water that was used uh, for drinking water, for, for bathing, and for our, uh, agriculture. The Teotihuacanes actually built aqueducts 200 years before the Romans did. So that just goes to show you how advanced these individuals were in terms of mathematics and engineering, guys. And there's proof in the city and the archaeology of the site of this and the timing and all that. I was actually absolutely amazed in how they did that. Overall, guys, I was absolutely fascinated. I enjoyed the trip. It was amazing, guys. It was absolutely well worth it. If you are in Mexico City, this is a must. I must do guys so i hope you guys learned something from this video i hope you guys enjoyed uh don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel below thank you very much guys appreciate it Like this, exactly like this. Hold it. Mm -hmm. Or put it here, my friend. Put it in front of the bottle in two steps. Please. There. What do you think? It's, it's my one degrees because of the button, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at this. There it is. Which number you see? Zero. Zero. I know my because the two thousand years old, still level. Impressive, right? Thirty-five percent original. This is a plaster. You can put it in that one. This one it works the same. Does the rain not erode it? It the paint only because this is rock solid rock. But this is the, the paint eroded the paint only, and the top. Always, that's why I said 35% is uh, original. The top collapsed like this. Only the top, because the base is still on. Mm -hmm. The floor, the color, you see? Still red. This is the idea, my friends, that's what I say, imagination. If you use imagination, I already have it in my mind. When I say the floor was flat and white color limestone, I'm watching it right now, flat and white. Even with water, I'm watching it right now. <laughs> So you see these little ones are missing something. What is it? The house. And inside the houses, there were statues carving, representing gods and goddesses. Mm -hmm. Gods and goddesses of nature, or elements, or seasons. Uh -huh. Okay. Actually, you want to know the real name of the temples in my language? Teosakwali. Mm -hmm. Say it. Teosakwali. Teosakwali is the real name of the temples, which means sacred mountain. Sacred mountain. Mm -hmm. A lot of people ask me, why did they build? high up because they want to represent the hills and the mountains where they get everything, all of the benefits. So you kind of explain why these buildings and structures are considered temples and not pyramids. It's because there's really nobody uh, buried underneath them. So there's been a lot of archeologists trying to figure out, trying to find if they found maybe a, a king or, or some sort of a emperor buried underneath the buildings, but they haven't found anything guys. And they also found a lot of evidence uh, that there was actually temples built on the top because they found statues of gods like uh, the god of, of rain, uh, Tlaloc, and also uh, Quetzalcoatl, the god of the, that represents the earth. So that's the reason why they consider temples. This was something that I learned that also blew my mind because I always thought that all these uh, buildings or these structures were actually all pyramids or people buried beneath it. But that's not always the case. A Mesoamerican culture, they worship uh, certain uh, natural uh, elements like the rain, uh, like the earth, uh, where you could uh, have agriculture and, and, uh, and grow crops like corn. So that was very important back in the Mesoamerican time, guys. This is the rain god. The rain god is Tlaloc, or Tlaloc in my language. Mm -hmm. Symbol of the sky, symbol of the rain. And the sun on the left is a symbol of the ground, symbol of the earth. Mm -hmm. And the feathers around, you can see the feathers around the head. That's why the name Quetzal Coat. Quetzal is a bird, Coat is a snake. Uh -huh. The snake is the ground, and this is the rain. That's in one. Because the rain god fertilized the ground to grow the corn. That's why even if you see the statue in front is holding something, what is it? Or oh, look at the fruit one, it's the same. Mm -hmm. It's holding corn. <coughs> oh wow. 
is holding corn. Now the snake has three animals in one. Three animals in one. Which other animal can you recognize? Monkey? A jaguar. Actually, yes, it is a jaguar. It's a jaguar, it's in a snake, and someone, uh, something else in the audience. What do you find in the audience? Of Teotihuacan has 3% slope. This is an aqueduct for you see the children. Uh -huh. For clean water. Even, even the, the volcano, that's something we know by archaeologists. The channels you see by the volcano, and we saw them from, from the highway when we were just coming in or close to the site. They were handmade by your people, okay? So they made them to dry inside, I'm, I'm sorry, drain inside the city, the water. So 3% higher, lower, it's like this. So every time it rains, the water flows like a snake. Do you have rivers where you live? I know. One second. Okay. Do you, you have rivers? No matter where you live, you have rivers. How do the river move? I'm gonna put this example. Colorado River, are you familiar? Mm -hmm. Rio Grande River? Mm -hmm. Two of them, where they end? They end in the Gulf of Mexico. When you look in the map, you look like two snakes falling each other, ending in the same place. What I'm trying to tell you, or people figure out, that's why the snake there, okay? Because this river, if you wonder where the river came from, the river came behind the volcano. Behind the volcano is the north. So the moon temple is lined up with the Polaris star which is true north, and I'm gonna prove it when we get to the moon. So the river came around, look, around here, like this, around, around, and they pass it, this is the river. They pass it by the city, and then they go southwest. Why it goes southwest? It goes southwest because the southwest is open valley to irrigate the corn fields. That's why, uh, before we, we got to the site, I mentioned, these were the corn fields, you remember that? This is where the corn fields where people grow out the corn, the vegetables, tomatoes, peppers, amaranth, quinoa, and everything there. Uh -huh. So this river catches the water of the city by the slope, by gravity, before Isaac Newton was born. Uh -huh. Just to know. So when the water gets there, it flows southwest. But let me tell you, on the right side of my hand, up ground, clean water. On my left side of my hand, under the ground, that you don't see it, but I'm gonna show you, dirty water from toilets, drainage system. But the drain, drainage system, you know, goes to a septic tank. And let me tell you this, and like I said before, this is history, don't take it personal. This is culture and history. But this is 200 years older than Romans. And this is clean water by gravity, and that's dirty water by the, they go, that goes to the septic tank. You understand? Okay, and we're gonna see it. So this is clean water. So under the Temple of the Sun is full of lava, my friends. That's why today we're going under the lava from the volcano, from that one. And the archaeologists say six meters. We are not in the Temple of the Sun. We are six meters, isn't it? Six mm -hmm. meters deep under the Sun Temple. Mm -hmm. 103 meters long we got inside and was raining. Was raining, but the water doesn't filter inside. Uh -huh. Takes time because in the rains, the little by little filters, filters takes time, okay? What we have here, my friends, is rectangles. This is what I say to you when I cut the square. The square is the plaza. If we cut that plaza on half, we get rectangles. These are the rectangles where people used to study the stars too by the slope of the city, 3%. I want you to come closer. No ants today. Normally there's a bunch of ants. Uh, you see these blocks of rock? Look, these blocks of rock. You already know the slope of the city, 3%. If it rains, the water flows through the city. What do you think they use the blocks of rock for? To the water. drainage. They plug, they plug, they use the block to plug. That's why they are so close to the aqueducts. They plug in to storage the water and use them as mirrors, okay? This is where they get the water, from the river or from the rain, in this case. In the case of the square, they get the water from where? From the river, because the river is higher. Mm. You understand? Everything is gravity in this place. During the day, these are the classrooms that I mentioned to you. We are in the holy city, my friends. Temples on the left side of the wall, temples on the right side of the wall that keep going. There is more than 46 that we know, excavated, because there is, there is more cover, yeah? So 46 temples dedicated to gods and goddesses. Mm -hmm. And they're supposed to, to have a house on the top. Behind the temples, there is houses, complex, royal complex around. <coughs> That's where the people live. 
royal people only. Priests, government, and professors. They were teaching about mathematics, engineering, architecture, philosophy, agronomy, medicine, astrology, and many other things in this place. You can see the head of the jaguar and the tongue of the snake. Yes. But two animals, jaguar and a snake, they have fangs. You don't see any fang in this, you see human teeth. Mm -hmm. Because this is what I'm just telling you about Nawali or Nawal. Nawal is a, is a medicine man that can turn to an animal, especially dog or coyote or jaguar. Can they the, the jaguar is a symbol of the Nawal by your ancestors. Can they still do it? Turn well, into animals? We, we don't see any, but there is uh, the mythological has been in our history for many years. And that's why the movie La Nawala by Walt Disney, mm -hmm. same thing as uh, I never see. You ask me, do you ever see? I never see anything doing this. I know medicine people, I know shamans, uh, but I never see turning to animals. Uh -huh. Then also another movie is called Coco. Mm -hmm. You saw the movie Coco? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because this show us a little bit of our ancient traditions. The Catholic religious came to Mexico and brought the religious and brought the language. But there is something they cannot change. Syncretism. Mm -hmm. Mexico is syncretism wherever you go. Wherever you go, you're gonna see someone dancing, burning incense, or do cleansing. Yes. You understand? I see. Like Socolo, or do steam baths, or try or work with plants like our ancestors did. Uh -huh. And someday we're gonna realize that like, we need to go back to plants. <laughs> Someday, no, 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 no. Or Sunday we're gonna realize that we need to dance or pray for this. May I? Don't move. For this. Water. Global warming, my friend. We're killing each other. I'm sorry, you you don't like this. I mean, but it's, it's real. I mean, I used to shower my friends in the lava river where we're going next my, with my brothers, with my cousins in the, in the rainy season. Not anymore dried up and we know the global warming is affecting not just here how about france how about russia how about the polar north how about everywhere mm -hmm. so it's going to be the day my friends probably you are not going to see it but your grandchildren are going to see it they're going to see it that the water is going to be more expensive than many other products one bottle of water can be as gold mm -hmm. i'm going to guarantee you that okay so here overlapping buildings that we know, three times. How do we know? It's called magnetic sonar. By magnetic sonar, archeologists can tell you what is underground without doing anything. You don't know what is inside. Technology is fascinating. Uh -huh. That's what we know. The, like I said, this snake, the Jawa, was replaced by another head, Jawa. The thousands and other two heads, they were they're supposed to be on the top of the temples. So this is a living rooms of our people here. Awesome. And you can see it. Boss. I want to tell you something, I'm 40 years old right now. When I was 10, when I was 12, we used to play hide and see. We used to come and enjoy and bring tequila and get drunk and, and get high with marijuana. Seriously, I'm telling you honestly, uh, 14, 15, uh -huh. and I started earlier. That's why I'm retired. And, and no hay niños, no. And you know, because a lot of people were coming and requesting Alejandro, where I can find pulque, Alejandro, where I can find magic mushrooms, Alejandro, where I can find this, marijuana. I know, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> and after the he 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 ha ha ha, we, we got drunk and we got the one, you know, I mean, huh? okay, sex, you're wondering, yeah, all together, you, you want nothing, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> you see this uh, red color? Yeah. This is what I'm going to tell you. The Sun Temple was all covered like this. And I used to see, I used to see more bright colors myself when I was 12, when I was 13. Yeah. Over the years, because this is open outdoors, it's been washed out little by little by the rain, by the sun. It's hard to see rain to me, to me, when I, when it's raining and I come here see. I'm just watching how the color is just going away, going away, because we don't want to that happen, yeah? But it's going to happen someday. Like I said, 25 or 28 years ago, when I was 14, when I was 13, yeah? This color was more brighter. And as the see, you see the color like this with plaster and everything? 
imagine the sun temple was exactly the same because the sun is red and orange same as this color when a sun sets that's red orange and a little bit of yellow that's something that people paint the sun to be as the sun calendar and a sun element mm -hmm. so this is living rooms of our ancestors let's go that way vamonos vamonos al 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 sol this uh, uh, a vigilant you watch make sure anybody do graffiti or takes anything he lives there in the little house he has a lot of things to show us you see the, his id look it's older at the side <laughs> Same age as the site. <laughs> no, it's gonna show us something. You see, this is mica. No. Esto era mica. Mica minerales. Se cayó. Un pedacito aquí está. Fueron cayendo si encontramos más. Hay más, ¿verdad? Hay mucha. It's a lot of this mica. Eh, a ver, aquí voy a poner esto. Vamos conmigo porque no se vayan a caer. Esto se echaba el reflejo del sol, como com el, el, el espejo. This, this, you see the mica? This is in your phone, this is in your watch, in your battery. Okay, this is a bank of mica protecting there. Every room, my friends, every single room was decorated with this mica on the ceiling. Awesome. Why? Wow. Fuck the sun. No, no, no. The light. The light Exactly, reflect the light, but yeah. to make it cooler, some, something else, something else. No, it's the opposite. Make it warmer. This is isolation. Oh. This is the way your people warm up in the winter time, because you put a candle, a light candle, mm -hmm. and the candle hits this mica. The mica, mica splares the heat. Mm -hmm. This is the way your people warm up in the winter time. All of this is mica. This is nothing, you know, compared to the one you can see in there. Camilo protects the bank of mica. So this is the one that people use. From Oaxaca, it's a mineral, but from Oaxaca. It comes from Oaxaca, okay? No shower heads, don't forget, no shower heads. No, they put it in their bodies by, uh, I forgot the name of this. How do you call it? Packets? Yeah, containers, but it's in English. It's, uh, Gourds, 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 got it, gourds, yeah. Why not head? No, yes, the head like this. But no shower heads, no shower heads. It was complicated, complicated to, yes, to complicated to send the water up and then, so that's why it's better to have a bucket. Catino. Si. So here, they get it. Now, the, the question is how do they move the water through here? We know the slope, right? I want you to see these aqueducts under their houses. This one, this is one of them. But there is one aqueduct. See? There is one aqueduct behind the one that fills up the cistern. When the cistern was full, they can block it, mm -hmm. as we know, and send it there to the next one, or send it here to the courtyard. Why the courtyard? If this is not deep enough to use it as a swimming pool, this is for observation of the sky in mm -hmm. the night time. Ay, ay, wow. ay, no internet, no, wow. no, no TV, no radio, no distraction. Exacto. <laughs> you see, the slope of the city is 10%. Ah. Higher, lower. Gravity. Yeah. Cisterns, toilets, drainage, separates. The first temple they build is the sun. That's something we know my car is taking a lot of people. I've been in the, in the inside, as I prove it, as I show you, yeah, uh, uh, with Mario. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the first, uh, or how do we know, is that the archaeologists took the first rock on the first level, and not directly, like this, a few seconds on the top of the sun, and then moves away. That's what happens. Same thing in the Stonehenge, England, or in Bolivia, Tiahuanaco. Tiahuanaco has a big door of the sun, it's called Pachacuta. So that's where the sun hits through the door. Stonehenge, same thing. Through but the, the door. Stonehenge. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. 
So this is what happens in this one, and you already know the color. Which color was it? Red and orange. Sun, Sun, Sun element, solar calendar. The moon used to be white. If you have a good eye, you can see it on the left. First level, you can see a little bit of the white color. And we're going to see it anyway. We're going there after the sun. Now we're going to give you free time to climb the sun temple. You see butterflies on the top of the sun, let me know. We'll explain you about the meaning, meaning of butterflies. Huh? I just put a compass one more time as I did it there. That's the north, the south. I just put it here and here. And this is zero one more time. This step is level as the first one is level two, zero. And you see, you already told me, zero, zero. Okay? Because this temple, my friends, is lined up exactly the same as that one. Yeah? What I explained you on the top of the moon, I, it's exactly the same the people is reading in front about the compass, the way people knew the directions. Huh? Everybody was coming from everywhere, but the main entrance was by the south where we started this morning. You come by the north, there is no way you can come in by the north. No, you have to make a lap to go around. You know why? Because you have to leave your tributes. Everybody pay tributes, not by money, by own products they grow. Or you do even hand labor. Huh? So the compass is in front. That one is a compass representing directions of the universe. Overall, I enjoy this experience, guys. Well worth your time, well worth your money, guys. It is a must if you are in Mexico City. All right, guys, take care. See you guys next time.